Last year, the government dropped a bombshell on private landlords, announcing future plans that, among other things, would make it far harder for them to evict tenants who weren't paying their rent. We talked about it in this video. It's made a lot of people very unhappy, and apparently it is driving some landlords out of the sector completely. But now, a House of Commons committee, which includes both Conservative and Labour members, have reviewed the proposals. And they're not happy either. They've just issued a report that challenges the government's plans and made alternative recommendations. And this isn't just a report that you often see come out from think tanks or pressure groups. This is an official parliamentary committee, and the government now has two months in which they must respond to these suggestions. In this video, I'll talk about what the government's plans are, talk about how they've been criticised by the committee, and the recommendations that they've made instead. Reading through the full report, I was genuinely shocked by a lot of what they had to say. It's pretty surprising from the start, but make sure you stick around to the end, because that's where the real surprise is lurking. Let's start with the government's plans to remove no-fault or Section 21 evictions. So the report starts off by summarising the government's proposals. So it says, the government says Section 21 has resulted in tenants feeling insecure by exposing them to the risk of unfair eviction. Under the new system, tenants will need to give two months notice if they wish to leave the property, and landlords will only be able to evict in reasonable circumstances. As abolishing Section 21 will make it harder for landlords to evict difficult tenants, the government says it will reform the grounds for possession. So it then describes what the government's current proposals are. One is to introduce new grounds for possession for landlords who wish to sell their property or move themselves or close family members into it, um, although it will not allow the use of these grounds in the first six months of the tenancy and will prevent the original landlord from marketing or reletting the property for three months following the use of either ground. So what this is saying is that at the moment, Section 21 is what you would use if you want to move back into the property or you want to sell it. The government still agrees that landlords should be able to do that. So it's having to remove that from Section 21 and put that into another section of law. But it doesn't want landlords to say, oh, yeah, I'm going to sell it, honest, and then actually not do that, which is why they're saying you can't do it straight away. And after you have done that, you can't then remarket the property for letting. So the idea is it means that you actually are genuinely moving back in or trying to sell it for a period of time. The other thing that's in the current proposals is to introduce a mandatory ground where a tenant has been at, at least two months rent arrears three times in the previous three years regardless of their arrears on the day of the hearing. So what this is saying is if you've got a tenant who's in repeated rent arrears, even if they're not in major arrears at the time of actually going to court, the fact that they have been persistently in arrears multiple times, that'll be enough to trigger an eviction notice. So that's what the government is currently proposing. That's what they said they'd do last year. Let's have a look now at what the committee has said in response to this and what they recommend. They say, a reasonable balance needs to be struck between security of tenure for tenants and a degree of certainty for landlords. We therefore recommend that tenants be unable to give two months notice to leave until they've been in a property for at least four months. This will give landlords the legal certainty of at least six months rent at the start of the tenancy. This to me makes complete sense. So at the moment, with the proposals as they're written, a landlord can't give notice for a period of time and it can only do so for certain reasons, but there's nothing to stop a tenant from moving in on day one and immediately giving two months notice to leave, which just doesn't seem right. So you could basically use it as short-term accommodation and it means that the landlord will then have all the hassle and the expense of reletting the property two months later, which is not what they were expecting to do. So I think that's an entirely reasonable suggestion. They then move on to talk about student housing. So since these proposals came out, a lot of people have pointed out that it just doesn't really work for the student sector because you always have students who want to move in and out at certain dates. But if you've got a tenancy that you can't bring to an end, then you can't say for certain to your incoming group of students that they will be able to move in because the last lot might not have moved out and you can't make them. So a lot of landlords have been arguing that these new rules shouldn't apply to the student market. And the committee agrees. They say the government should retain fixed term tenancies in the entire student housing sector. So again, completely agree with that one. Makes sense. And if the government takes notice of their recommendation and does it, then that'll make a lot of landlords very happy. The committee then goes on to say something that you very rarely hear from politicians, which is landlords find Section 21 particularly useful for evicting tenants who are in serious rent arrears or responsible for repeated antisocial behaviour. Since the majority of Section 21 notices are served for these reasons, landlords stressed that they were not no-fault evictions and said landlords had no financial incentive to evict a tenant without good reason. It's really amazing to actually see that because when you read about this kind of thing in the press, 
always made out that if a section 21 is served, it's always because the landlord wants to increase the rent or get rid of the tenant because the tenant's being difficult. But what it says there is that the majority of the time, it's actually because the tenant is in arrears or is committing antisocial behaviour. We often talk about how that's the case, but to see that recognised in a political document is quite incredible. And it then goes on to address why landlords are using that type of eviction. It says, The inefficiency of the court system was of even greater concern to landlords than the grounds for possession, since their principal objection to relying on Section 8 is how long it'll take to secure possession. The system was variously described as broken, severely backlogged and delayed, and incompetent, expensive, and frustrating. Currently, it can take up to 12 months for a landlord to gain possession under Section 8. And then, a little bit later, they say, We recognise that the majority of private landlords are responsible and have no desire or financial incentive to evict tenants without good reason, and that for these landlords, Section 21 feels like an indispensable means of evicting bad tenants. Again, we know this to be true, but you never see politicians recognising it, so it's just so crazy to see it actually written down. But they recognise that there's a balance to be struck, and so they go on to make a series of recommendations for how to make sure that landlords can evict tenants who aren't paying, and they can reasonably get their property back if they want to sell it or move back in, but they can't abuse those rules and use it in the same way as they could do now as a means of just chucking someone out for another reason. So they then make two recommendations about how this could be achieved. One of them is to increase from six months to one year the period at the start of a tenancy during which the landlord may not use either ground. So what this is saying is you can't have tenants move in and then say six months later, oh, actually, sorry, I want to move back in or I want to sell, so you have to get out. It, they are saying it would be a year before you could do that. And I don't think that's unreasonable at all. So I get that landlords take the view that this is my property, it's my asset, so if I want to be able to sell it, I should be able to do that. It's I shouldn't have to wait for that long before I can do it. And I get it, but at the same time, it's also someone's home, and it's really annoying if they've just moved in, had all the expense of moving, and suddenly, because you've made a decision, they have to get out again. I think having a year is about the right balance, so I agree with this one. They then make a second recommendation, which is to increase the notice period from two months to four months to give tenants time to save up for moving costs and find alternative accommodation. And again, I completely agree with this. If someone's asking for their property back because they want to sell it or move back in, and that's genuinely the reason is not actually because the tenant's not paying, there's no other way of getting them out. In that scenario, I think two months is not long enough on the tenant's side. If you've got a family, for example, so you need to have a particular type of property in a particular area, you need to sort of uproot everyone, two months is really not long to make that happen. And it's really, really stressful. So four months, given that in this scenario, it genuinely isn't the tenant's fault. I don't have a problem with that at all. That sounds about right. So that's all fine, but none of it addresses a landlord's principal objection, which is that the only reason I'm using this type of eviction in the first place is because to go the other way and sort of say it's the tenant's fault because they're in arrears or they're committing antisocial behaviour, it takes so long that it's just not realistic. And the report already said, well, it can take 12 months and that just doesn't seem right. But the committee does go on to address this with another recommendation. So they say, we strongly recommend that the government introduce a specialist housing court as the surest way of unblocking the housing court process. Whether it does this or not, it's absolutely essential that the government significantly increase the court's ability to process possession claims quickly and efficiently and in a way that is fair to both landlords and tenants. In consultation with landlords, the government should also agree how quickly the courts need to be processing possession claims before landlords can have confidence in the system and then commit to meeting this target before abolishing Section 21. This is amazing that they're actually going this far, and it's getting to the heart of what we said in our previous video about this, which is that this is all fine. If evictions work in cases where you do have tenants who are in arrears or who are causing trouble, then great, all of this stuff is totally fine, but you need the courts to be working so you can have faith in the other route. So we said that the courts should be reformed. What this report is saying is not only that the courts should be reformed, is that that should happen before this change of law comes into effect, and you can see that it's actually working. And it makes complete sense, but I'm still so surprised to actually see it written down. Yeah, if they did this, if landlords could see that they were able to get possession through the courts in a way that they'd expect that you should do if someone was in arrears, then they wouldn't care about any of this other stuff. So I'm surprised that they're making this recommendation, but I completely agree with it. So I think some of what we've seen so far is amazing, but we haven't even got to the truly incredible bit. That's coming up now, 
as they move towards a conclusion and they start to talk about tax. So first, they dig into the government's motivations and they say, the only certainty is that the government does not know what is happening in the private rented sector and has not said what role it wants it to play in the wider housing mix. In particular, it is difficult not to suspect, given the changes to how the buy-to-let sector is taxed, that the government would like landlords with smaller portfolios to leave the sector. Pretty brutal and true. It's what we and large parts of the property industry have been saying for a long time. They then go on to say, we recommend that the government review the impact of recent changes to taxation rules in the buy-to-let sector with a view to making changes to make it more financially attractive to smaller landlords. If it is not willing to do this, it should at least be much clearer about what role it wants the private rented sector to play in the wider housing mix, and in particular, whether it values the involvement of landlords with very small portfolios. That's just, wow. You've got a parliamentary committee coming out and saying, the government's not said what they want. They seem to want to push small landlords out. If they do want to push small landlords out, they should at least say so and say what they want to happen instead. And if they do, then they should go back and look at the tax changes and effectively reverse them so landlords aren't being pushed out for tax reasons as well as some of the other potential reasons around uh, the tenancy reform that we've already talked about. I know that my reaction to this is going to upset absolutely everyone because you've got to have tenants advocacy groups saying this is like rolling back what was needed to happen, doesn't go far enough, uh, this is pandering to landlords, we don't need landlords. And then you're going to have landlords saying this doesn't go far enough, in the other direction, there should be no restrictions on what I do with my property, blah, blah, blah. Personally, though, I think that this report absolutely nails it. All the suggestions seem to be striking a really good balance between both sides. They made suggestions that seem to address the concerns that have come out from the property sector since this was announced last year, without fundamentally changing anything that tenants groups would say needed to happen. And particularly with the bit around the housing courts, they've said that they've come up with something that will basically remove the main objection by sort of saying, sort this out first, and then everyone will be okay with the rest of it. I just think that's so good. And then you get onto the tax bit, and I can completely agree with that as well. I think if the government said, we are just not interested in having small landlords, we don't think it's a good idea, then you might not agree with it, but at least you we could like respect their point of view and you could understand what they were driving at. Whereas at the moment, they seem to be not regarding landlords' interests at all with the policies that they come up with, but at the same time, not saying we don't want you. So I completely agree with the report there as well. Whereas it's like, just tell us, just tell us what you want. And if what you want is a private rented sector where small landlords can participate, then you're going a funny way about it. So the government now has two months to respond to this. It could throw it all out completely. They have to respond, but they could just say, yeah, thanks, but no, we're going to do what we were anyway. But I'd say it's likely that they're going to at least take some of it on board and we'll end up in a better position as a result of that. So I think you should be encouraged as an investor. But even if all the laws and taxes and everything are on your side, you can still mess it up. You can still, as an investor, make mistakes that cost you a lot of money. I see them happening all the time and I've made them myself. So watch this video next where I explain how a property investment costs me £22,000.